an honest better help review the good the bad and the odd I hope you guys are in for a ride. This story is a little bit of a long one and it's a bit of a complicated one. And so if you want an honest BetterHelp review, I hope you stick till the end to really understand what my thoughts are and whether or not I'd recommend it for you. My BetterHelp journey started in the fall of 2022 where I really wanted some additional mental health support with regards to my chronic illness. I had been spending much of my summer in bed and I had just finished going out into the countryside for a family holiday and I came back and realized that I needed some help kind of getting back out there after spending two years on, almost two years on disability and spending most of that time in the house, you know, pandemic and things. I needed some help really figuring out what I was capable of doing with my chronic illness, what I could actually do without causing flare-ups from a mental health perspective. I really was looking for support with my chronic illness and my mental health associated to that, and that's really what brought me to BetterHelp. I had heard BetterHelp a lot on YouTube and different forums and different ads that I'd seen, and I thought it might be a really good fit for a few reasons. One, I didn't have to leave the house, which meant that Luke didn't have to haul me around for different appointments. I didn't have to find a counselor or a psychologist that had had accessible offices, which is harder said than done sometimes. So the reality was it just made things easier. I could do it during the day when Luke wasn't home and it just allowed me that flexibility of scheduling my own time and doing my one hour therapy kind of whenever I wanted to. So the way BetterHelp works when you set up your account is you essentially let them know what you're looking for. And at the same time, you pay for your first month. This price will range based on your needs, whether you do couples therapy or individualized therapy, which they do do both. I went through the individualized therapy side. Now, as a person with disabilities, you actually get a discount and this is by no means complex. You simply let them know that you're a person with disabilities and what your disabilities are. That's pretty much all I had to do. It was very simple. I really appreciated that from BetterHelp because sometimes you gotta work through so many hoops and it's not even worth the small discount that you get. I believe it's about 50 bucks off a month, which is in USD. It really was just nice to know that BetterHelp actually understood where I was coming from that early on in my journey with BetterHelp. So I did truly appreciate that. Honestly, the cost is and could potentially be prohibitive for some people at over $400 Canadian and a little bit more if you're not a person with disabilities. That chunk of money a month is, is something to consider. I think it depends where you are financially, what your position is, what your mental health status is and how important it is for you to spend that money on your mental health. One of the biggest challenges with BetterHelp for me was the fact that they only offer weekly therapy. You get therapy once a week with the same therapist and that's what you're paying for. For me, I just seemed like that was a lot. I didn't need weekly therapy in this current instance. I would have needed it three, four years ago when we were getting married and you really wanna test your mental health, try and get married and do a wedding with 150 people. You'll understand what I'm talking about. I was doing weekly therapy in the months going up to our wedding and that would have been a lot of help back then. In this instance with me trying to manage my chronic illness and my mental health, I didn't feel the need for weekly sessions. I found that as I got on to the system and really went through the process, I was finding it a little bit much. I wasn't given enough time to really process through the different things that my therapist was giving me to do because it just takes me longer to do things. And so weekly therapy just wasn't working for me. Ultimately, that is the reason why I stopped paying for better help. It gets a little bit more complicated than that. When I first started, my very first therapist was unfortunately Unfortunately, not a great one. And this is kind of the challenge of therapy in general. You really need to find someone that clicks and someone that works with you. So if you get on the BetterHelp system and that first therapist, you have your first meeting and it just doesn't go well or it just doesn't seem to be a good fit, that's okay. 
The BetterHelp app actually makes it so easy to change therapists. It's literally three clicks of a button and they give you a brand new list of therapists to choose from. I really appreciated that part of it. It was really easy to change. I changed therapists five times, I believe, in the span of almost four months I was on the app, which seems like a lot, but sometimes you just need to find the right fit. That first therapist just wasn't a good fit. After two sessions, I realized very quickly she just didn't have the knowledge I needed and just didn't have the expertise from a chronic illness perspective. If you are planning on getting onto the BetterHelp app specifically for chronic illness, BetterHelp if you somehow manage to watch this, your therapists are not certified for managing chronic illness. I went through five different therapists and not one of them had a real chronic illness background that could actually help me in this particular situation. They use their skills to help me in different ways, but the reality was from a chronic illness perspective, it was really lacking. And so if you are specifically looking for chronic illness support, I would not recommend BetterHelp. If you find a therapist on their system that really helps you, I would love to hear who it is because you can request specific therapists. The reality was, is I just wasn't able to find someone who had the expertise of chronic illness to really be able to help me. On top of the weekly therapy, that was definitely that secondary thing that really made me kind of realize that it wasn't for me. I wish they had different monthly options that it'd be once a month, every two weeks, once a week. And I think the reason they don't do that is because someone looks at the, the budgeting side of things. They might need weekly therapy, but they just can't afford it. So they go down to other systems or other payment methods, but they don't offer those. So you kind of don't have a choice. I truly believe it would help better help to be able to actually do other options other than just weekly. So here is who I would recommend BetterHelp truly for. If you're someone who has mental health issues and really needs additional active support, BetterHelp is the place for you. It truly is a great resource. They offer not only video calls to do your therapy, but you can do them only by text or by chat, which is absolutely cool. Not for me, but for people who have a lot of challenging verbalizing and would rather just text for an hour, that is actually an option on, on BetterHelp, which I actually didn't know when I first started BetterHelp. And so I thought that was just so cool for people who are either neurodivergent or other people who just have a challenge verbalizing issues and would much rather just type away for an hour. I think that would that's just simply amazing. Being verbal with my therapist was the way that I did video chats. One of the things that I noticed was to be frank, the lack of professionalism when it came to some of my therapy sessions with a few of the therapists that I didn't stick very long with, they didn't have that level of professionalism compared to when you go into an office and you sit down in a room. It's a different level of professionalism than I found via video chat with some of the BetterHelp therapists. Some of them, you know, had their children running around. Some of them had their phone dinging and just certain things that just from a therapy perspective, I did not expect. Now that just might be me as someone who's only been through fairly traditional therapy, going and sitting into someone's office for an hour. But I just felt I should get a very similar experience that it be in person or via video chat. And so I was a little disappointed in some of the behavioral things that I saw with some of the therapists. I can imagine trying to manage Manage that many therapists and that many appointments from a better health perspective is next to impossible. But the reality is, is there's not a lot of way for us to feedback to better help other than letting them know whether or not the therapist was late and whether or not they supported your journey. There's no way to tell them, you know what, better help, you should maybe look into this therapist before you keep referring them. I think there's a check and balance situation that might need to be reviewed from a better help perspective. But honestly, they make it so easy to switch therapists that I didn't feel it too cumbersome to keep going and moving forward. But that's something to note that make sure that the therapist 
you choose is someone that really is really meshing with you and really has that level of professional that you require from them and that they really give you the support you're looking for. Everyone is so different when it comes to therapy and looking for support. This might be my experience, but everyone's experience is going to be truly different. And that's a good thing. Therapy is really meant to help you in whichever way it is needed for you. And so I think that flexibility is not a bad thing. It's actually a really good thing. Now, my last major point and or I don't want to say complaint, but complaint with BetterHelp was just simply the fact that some of the therapists were just not interested. For the most part, had full-time jobs and BetterHelp is actually kind of a side hustle for them. Every single one of the therapists I ended up being referred to, that was the situation they were in. So BetterHelp wasn't their main therapy system. They actually had full-on practices or had other jobs and then also did sessions on BetterHelp. And this made things quite complex. The last therapist that I spent the most amount of time with, I believe it was about two months out of the almost four months I did BetterHelp. He actually had another job. It happened quite a few times where he had to cancel on me last minute or straight up missed my appointment because of his other job. And I, I, I have issue with that for so many reasons. I'll let you make your, your assumptions on that one. It turned me off of BetterHelp, especially that I'd been through so many therapists at this point and I was on my third fourth month of paying for better help and I just I wasn't getting the need I was looking for I wasn't getting the support I was looking for I was almost getting too much support in some ways and not enough in others and it just didn't work for me and that's truly the biggest reason why I decided not to keep going weekly didn't work for me and on top of that the complication from a therapist perspective was just it just didn't work for some of you, if you are Canadian, note that most of the therapists on the BetterHelp system when I was on it are American, which added additional social complications from especially a chronic illness perspective because of the fact that their health system is so different from ours, like polar opposites. I found that a lot of them just didn't understand where I was coming from and had a really hard time wrapping their heads around it, to be frank. Please note that, that if you are in the US and you're watching this, you may not have the same issues I did, but as a Canadian, in a completely different concept, especially when you're talking chronic illness, I think it was it, it was a barrier um, in this particular situation. And because of this, and because you're matched with a therapist anywhere around the world, you cannot send it into insurance. Well, I, in Canada anyways. So our insurances require that they be Canadian therapists. And unfortunately, the BetterHelp app doesn't let you pick specifically by country, which I think is something that could be interesting in the long term. I hope they might even look at fixing that. So I think the biggest thing with that is for us to be able to get insurance back on BetterHelp, I would have to be matched with a Manitoba psychiatrist or psychologist that is certified within our system here. So it would have to be very specific within Manitoba. Even if I was connected to someone in Toronto or somewhere else in the country, that wouldn't work either. So just note that from an insurance perspective, good luck. I doubt you'll ever be able to get a penny back from that perspective. I never intended to do that. It's just a note for people who are watching this. Don't depend on getting money back in some way, shape or form through insurance because the chances are you're not going to. Now, one of the best parts about BetterHelp, and it's honestly one of the parts that I didn't know existed until I started using the app, is group therapy. The groups that they have available to you and the psychologists that monitor and do all of these groups are absolutely amazing. I was in a group for chronic illness and chronic pain. Honestly, that was my favorite part about BetterHelp. I wish I could just sign on to the app and pay for some way to be able to just have access to group. I miss that group, I'll be honest. Group therapy for chronic illness, I think is underutilized and underfunded. I wish there were more options. There just aren't very many. This was truly a resource that I can't even explain how great that group was 
and I truly wish I could go back simply just for that reason. If you're someone who's recently lost someone, if you're a single parent, single mom or dad, someone specifically looking for help, they've got support women in new jobs, they've got so many group therapy options, it's incredible. There's so many different groups. I honestly, truly think that they underutilize that section of the app. And I wish BetterHelp had a way to just allow us access to group without having individualized therapy. I do think that that would be hard and I don't expect them to ever be able to do that. But holy Hannah, group therapy was amazing. I loved every single session I was a part of to the psych that ran my group chronic pain therapy. Thank you so much. You are amazing. My last point I want to make is just a simple fact that if that it be from a psych perspective or that it be from your perspective, if you miss a session, whoever's fault it is, that is your own or that it's someone else's, if you end up only having two sessions in a month, you pay the same amount. It doesn't matter how many sessions you have, you pay the same amount monthly and it's up to you and your psych to be able to manage having you in their schedule every week, which for some psychs were so busy, it just wasn't even possible. I was meeting with one of the psychiatrists or psychologists every like 10 days because that's the fastest I could get in their schedule. And the reality was you can't pre-book. So you have to have your session before you can book your next session, which, okay, fine. That's just the way they do it. But because this particular psychiatrist was so busy, I could only get in every 10 days. And I'm like, but I'm paying for every seven days, essentially getting a session every week. So that just got complicated real darn fast. So I paid for three months, which should have been 12, in theory, 12 sessions. And I only had eight. That's something to really consider is making sure that the fit not only works, but that the scheduling also works, that you can meet with this therapist on a weekly basis, because that just made it annoying. Spending money and knowing you're not getting the service you're supposed to be getting just kind of sucks. From a, a good, the bad, and the odd. Odd was for me just truly the communication and the professionalism side of things was very unexpected. Group therapy was absolutely amazing. And from a week to week therapy system, BetterHelp is absolutely incredible. And so if you think that you're at a level where you truly need week to week therapy, I would highly recommend BetterHelp. It is very cost effective from a week to week perspective. Sykes can be upwards of $200, $250 an hour, and it ends up being about $80 to $100 an hour at BetterHelp. So it's much more cost effective to be able to connect on a weekly basis on better help than it is to be able to like go into somebody's office and pay that fee every week. And so if this seems like, you know, it seems to be the right fit for you, weekly therapy makes sense. The budget makes sense for you. I would truly recommend BetterHelp. Uh, you know, as much as I had my challenges, had my complications using the app, I truly believe it is a great service and I hope that over time things get better. I may even try it again at the end of this year. I haven't decided yet because I, I, I'll be honest, I miss group therapy a lot. It was a great group and I, I wish I could reconnect with them but hard to justify the cost only for that reason. And so we'll see, we'll see how it goes, but that's my honest better help review. I hope it helps some of you understand kind of how it works and whether or not this might be a fit for you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on BetterHelp if you've ever used it, or if you have any questions, I would love to help answer those questions for you. The comment box is widely open for you. If you've liked this video, I would love a like. And if you'd like to continue on joining me on my chronic illness journey, by all means, subscribe if you'd like to. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and we'll see you next week. Don't forget to slow your roll. I have an entire playlist dedicated to all of my review videos. Check it out over here.